Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and today we're gonna take a quick look at these slightly used Tony Llama elephant boots that were actually dyed black by the previous owner. So let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya and then I'll be on my way. There's a pretty cool story behind these boots. One of my viewers named How found these on eBay and he emailed me and asked why the leather looked so different than some other elephant leathers that he's seen before. And they just happened to be in my size, so he got them for me for the purposes of this video. Huge thanks to How for making this possible. And we'll go over the qualities of elephant leather later on in the video, but I also wanna thank CISO Boot Company for helping me out because I ran into a wall doing research on this boot and he's just a pro in boot style codes. So I sent him the codes and he was able to provide me with a lot of information about this boot. If you wanna learn more about CISO Boot Company, I put the link to their website in the description. He sells a lot of awesome vintage boots. All right, guys, now it's time to get into the rundown. This Tony Llama model number CZ973 features elephant leather on the vamp and the counter, which was dyed black by the previous owner. However, I think it was gray because I was able to scratch some of the dyeing off of the counter on the right boot, and I can see a little bit of gray there, so I'm not 100% and it didn't show up in the style codes that I sent to CISO Boot Company. So I think it was gray, but the dyeing on this wasn't done very well because also there's lots of bleeding on the inside too. Like they weren't very careful about it and it definitely doesn't look as good as if it was a black leather coming from the factory. It also features an awesome medium round toe Cecil Boot Company told me that this is actually their Z-Toe, but uh, it's basically a medium round. It also stands at 12 inches tall, and of course that dying is also on the shaft, and it kind of ruins the coloring in the stitching too. So there might have been a different color stitching there. We'll never know because it's black, and uh, that's one reason why the dying isn't really the greatest because there was a lot of color thought there was a lot of thought process in this boot and it's just sort of taken away with that black dye and this black dye can never be fully removed because it's so dark for a heel it's a one and five eighths inch stacked leather heel so pretty much everything about the outside of this boot is very traditional it, including the outsole which is leather with nails and pegs, and it also has a Goodyear welt, which means this sole can be replaced when it sort of gets a hole in it. And the heel caps are still relatively new, so if you guys are wondering why used boots are even a thing, like it's gross or whatever, but it's not really if you can learn to recognize only slightly used boots. And a great hint to that is sometimes in the heel cap, because you can still see how much texture there is and the company logo clearly stamped there. If it was worn down anymore, if you saw a half sole, like a slit in the middle where it was replaced, I'm saying you probably don't wanna buy those used boots because you don't know how much wear they actually have. But if you find one with the original stuff on it and it doesn't have very much wear, those boots have years of life left in them just like this Tony Llama elephant boot. On the inside, we are leather lined all the way through and it feels great. And again, you can see some of that staining here where the person wasn't really careful about how they were dying. For an insole, we have a comfort cushion system. CISO Boot Company says that that's what the C stands for in the code. And that has like a little foam and a little cloth. It's not supposed to be removed, but I did get it out. There's only a little bit of glue holding it in there. I'll probably take them out completely and replace them with thin leather insoles because they are still used and cloth isn't really the greatest thing to you know, pass along. Even though they are only slightly used, there's no reason for me not to put in my own thin leather insoles since they're gonna be better and last longer than the thin cloth ones that are in here. So 
definitely a corner cut in this early 2000s Tony Lama, but uh, that's when some of these boot companies had to start doing that so that they could stay in business. Still, the insole is not a deal breaker. This boot is awesome in my opinion. The leather is great. It's super traditionally made except for the insole and how they did that, but this is an awesome boot and the elephant will last years, if not decades. Now let's try this boot on and see how it looks and feels. Nice sound. All right, I got the Tony Lama Elephant boots on right now, and you guys heard that sound when I put these on. That pop is such a good hint to the perfect fit, and damn, do these fit amazingly. The US made Tony Lamas fit so incredible. I love their narrow widths. This 12B is spot on. That elephant leather feels crazy durable. It's not super stiff, and that could be because it was partially broken in by the previous owner, but uh, it still definitely has a long way to go for being completely broken in. Feels great, guys. This is an awesomely durable leather. It's some of custom boot makers' favorite leathers to use because it does hold up to pretty much anything. The insole, I'm not too excited about it, to be honest. I'm one of those guys that prefers the hard leather traditional make Tony Llamas. Those are way better. It actually forms to your foot and this is something that sort of cuts that corner, makes the boot just a little bit cheaper to produce. So I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm gonna take it out and swap it for a, a thin leather insert, which is gonna make this boot feel a lot more comfortable to me. So um, if you guys are looking for that sort of thing, if you're looking for an insole, it does have some nice arch support, but again, that's probably the fit alone. The insole really isn't that thick and it's not doing very much. It is giving you a little bit of cushion if you have to be on your feet all day, which might be nice. But again, once you break in a hard leather insole, a lot of you will have no problems with that either. So again, not a huge fan. Here's how it looks point of view. You know, it's kind of harder to tell that they were dyed after market when you're just looking down at them. Um, but uh, they definitely don't have the vibrancy of a leather straight from the factory. Still, I really like this boot. Let's take it back to the table. So this Tony Lama boot looks great, but the dyeing of it does sort of take away some excitement, and it also definitely made this boot a little less valuable because if the previous owner had left it the way that it was, he probably would have been able to sell it for a lot more. Uh, so if you're just looking for an elephant boot and you don't care if it's dyed, then that's cool. Like you can probably haggle with the person a little bit, but I know a lot of cowboy boot collectors would not be interested in this boot just because it is dyed. Let me know where you stand. And the whole reason why I think this might get confusing about whether you think it's elephant leather or not is because it's dyed. But when you look really close, you can, you can tell. Dyeing the boot could take away some of the tanning process or coloring that the factory put into this leather, really accentuating the things that you get from Elephant naturally. So if we look at this Elephant boot, which was made by Siller Boot Company, it's a custom boot, and this uses Elephant too, and you can really see sort of the scratches and the scars in this Elephant leather. And here, you really can't see that because it doesn't have those darker areas where you can kind of notice the depth of those scars. But when you get in close on this boot, and you can kind of see with the way that the light's shining on it, you still have those scars here. So if somebody takes a bad picture of this with their mobile phone or some camera from the 1990s, then yeah, it would definitely look different from what we usually see coming out of factories. Another way people get confused about elephant leather is actually the similarity to bull hides. A lot of bull hide boots will have very similar creases in the grain of the leather, but it's much smoother. Like you don't have that sandpaper sort of coarse feeling or texture on a bull hide boot. So you can definitely tell when you look at all of these up close that there are two elephants on the side and then this one in the middle is a bull hide boot. Cecil Boot Company actually shared all of this great information about how you can tell different leathers apart on a live stream hosted at 
Lone Star Boot Review's YouTube channel. I was actually on that live stream too, just hanging out with all of them as the presentation went on. It was so much fun. I highly recommend you check that out. I put the link to it in the description. And definitely subscribe to Lone Star Boot Reviews while you're there. He's doing some great stuff. All in all, this Tony Llama Elephant Boot is awesome. It's very traditionally made except for the insole, which I will take out and replace with something that I'm more comfortable with. And if you're looking for a good deal on boots, finding home dyed used boots that are only slightly used like this give you a great position to haggle and bring that price down. Let me know what you think of these Tony Llama Elephant boots down in the comments. Thank you so much to Howe for making this video possible. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Those Tony Llama Elephant boots are bona fide. Even if they have been home dyed, they still have great traits, and they're looking pretty great. You can hardly notice when you're stepping in your stride. Yeah, thank you so much for watching today. Why don't you check out this video up here about another pair of Tony Llama elephant boots that I looked at at Beth West. Or I got a video down here about my new album, Life is for Taking Chances. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.